Okay, section 7.2 is going to be naming molecular compounds. So, and this is also known as covalent, if you don't realize. Molecular is synonymous with covalent. So, um, we're going to write the names from the formulas, and we're going to do the opposite. Write the formulas from the names. So, the first thing you have to do is identify, is your compound molecular? And remember, to do this, a co covalent compound or a molecule is a nonmetal plus another nonmetal. If this is the dividing line of our periodic table, then nonmetals are found on the right hand side over here. So these are my nonmetals. So you need two or more nonmetals to combine in order for it to be considered a molecular compound and therefore can use the rules of naming that we are about to learn. So what is the easiest way to recognize a molecular compound? If there's no metal present, then the compound is most likely molecular. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule, but this is a good rule of thumb. So in these examples, calcium is a metal, so this compound is ionic. And so we will not use these following naming rules. N2O5, that's a nonmetal plus another nonmetal, so because this is covalent, we will use the naming rules that I'm about to show you. Al2O3, because aluminum is a metal, we're going to go ahead and call this ionic. And PCL3 is two nonmetals, so this one is covalent. All right, are there any exceptions that you should look for? Yes, if ammonium is present, you have to be careful because ammonium in H4 is a polyatomic ion in H4 plus one. And since it has a charge as a polyatomic ion, it's actually going to be considered an ionic compound in that case. So look out for NH4, ammonium. It should be your only polyatomic ion exception for this course. All right, so what makes naming molecular compounds different from naming ionic compounds? We're going to use prefixes to name our molecular compounds. Remember, because these are covalent, there are, and this is very important, there are no charges because they're sharing the electrons, not transferring them. So there is no canceling, no switching, no uncanceling, no unswitching. There are no charges in a covalent compound. So you cannot name these or write their formulas the same way that we do ionic. That's why it's important to be able to tell the difference. Okay, so these prefixes you're about to learn are never to be used to name an ionic compound. All right, so here are two examples. Um, this one is covalent, and I'll tell you how you can tell because we have phosphorus, which is a nonmetal, and chloride, which is chlorine. Both of those, phosphorus is P, chloride is Cl, these are both nonmetals making this covalent. Notice the prefixes in the front, di and pent. Those are prefixes, and I'm going to give you a list momentarily. Notice in our bottom example here, we have sodium, which on the periodic table is Na, and we have sulfate, which if you know your ions is SO4. These have charges because this is ionic, and so I'm going to stop here because we learned how to do ionic compounds in the last section. These, notice though, I wanted you to notice that there are no prefixes in front of these. You should never have prefixes in front of an ionic compound's name. All right, so how to name molecular compounds. There's two main rules to follow. The first one is you never begin with the prefix mono. Meaning, if I start with only one, for example, if I had NO, that would be nitrogen and oxygen. The prefix for one is mono. So you would want to call this mono nitrogen. And because we have one oxygen, you would call that mono or monoxide. Notice I didn't write monoxide, I dropped one of the O's. And so this is to tell me I have one nitrogen and one oxygen, which is the case in my formula. However, we never start the name with mono. So really, the answer is just going to be nitrogen monoxide for NO. The second, and you may have already noticed it, the second rule is we'll always end the final name with a suffix of IDE. 
and that is right here at the end of my name. Notice I did not end nitrogen. It's not nitride monoxide. I only ended the last part of my name with IDE. Okay, so our prefix is on the right hand side. If you need to pause and copy them down, you can do that. Here's an example. If I give you the formula PCL3 and I want the name, all you need to notice is that there is one phosphorus and there are three chlorines. So to translate that, one, the prefix is mono, but again, remember, we're not going to start with mono. So really, I'm just going to start this with phosphorus. And because there are three chlorines, the prefix for three is tri. And then instead of chlorine, I'm going to change that to IDE. And so it's going to be trichloride. I'm going to end it in IDE. And so that would be the name for this particular compound. Here's another example. If I give you the formula in 204, you give me the name. Notice we have two nitrogens and we have four oxygen. So the prefix for two is di, so it's going to be di-nitrogen, and the prefix for four is tetra, and instead of oxygen, I'm actually going to change this to oxide. So it's going to be tetra oxide. And instead of having two vowels right next to each other, I'm actually going to drop the A, and it'll just be tetroxide. It's not a big deal if you don't remember to do this on the test. It's just kind of the formality. So this would be tetroxide. So dinitrogen tetroxide is the name for this one. Okay, so I'm going to show you both where if I give you the formula, you tell me the name. And if you give me, if I give you the name, then you tell me the formula. If you'd like to pause and see what you can do on your own first, you can do that and then press play again so that you can see the answers. Okay, number one, we have one sulfur. So that's one sulfur and we have two oxygens. So that's going to be called sulfur dioxide. In number two, we have one carbon and we have four chlorine. So that's going to be called carbon tetra chloride. In number three, we have one nitrogen and we have one oxygen. And so that'll be called nitrogen monoxide. And notice I didn't put monoxide, I dropped one of the O's. We have a number four, one phosphorus and five chlorines. So that's gonna be called phosphorus penta chloride. And in number five, we have two nitrogens, five oxygens, so that's going to be called dinitrogen pentoxide. And I dropped the A in penta. Okay, what if I want to write the formula? We have oxygen, that's one oxygen, and difluoride. Di means two. One oxygen, two fluorides. But to write that as a ratio, as our formula, this is a ratio of one to two, so it's one oxygen and two fluorides. Here we have one carbon and mono means we have one oxygen. So the answer is going to be CO, one of each. In number three we have three phosphorus and we have six fluorides. So that formula is going to be P3F6. In number four we have one nitrogen and we have three iodines. So that's going to be written nitrogen Ni3. And the last one we have one carbon and dioxide means two oxygens so that's going to be CO2.